American Craftsman podcast is sponsored by Hayfla. Hayfla offers a wide range of products and solutions for the woodworking and furniture making industries. From hinges and drawer slides to connectors and dowels, sandpaper, wood glue, shop carts, and everything in between. Exclusive product lines such as Lux LED lighting and Slido door hardware ensure that every project you create is built to last. Learn more at Hayfla.com. Additional sponsorship provided by Ridge Carbide. When you need the right saw blade for the job, put your trust in Ridge Carbide Tools. For over 50 years, Ridge Carbide has been producing industrial saw blades designed with the exact specifications for the cutting results you expect. Before you buy, call us and we'll help you determine the right tool that meets your needs and your budget. After the sale, Ridge Carbide provides sharpening services for all your saw blades, dado sets, router bits, and joint or planer knives. Located in Kansas, Ridge Carbide Tools provides high-quality products with outstanding customer service at a fair price. What are you cutting? Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the show. I realized I turned off the air conditioner and it didn't turn off. (laughs) So you hear a brisk wind there in the beginning. Uh, Yeah, welcome back to the American Craftsman Podcast. I'm Jeff of Green Street Joinery. I'm John of John Peters. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, Um, I guess we're still still figuring out our formatting here a little bit, but... um, We can talk about the video we just shot. Yeah, I think that's... um, like maybe we use this as like a preview, you know, videos come out Saturday, podcast comes out Friday. Hey, you want to know what this video is going to be about? You For sure. find out on Friday. For sure. So we just shot a video on the saw stop job site saw. Mm-hmm. And um, we were going to shoot another video on the spray booth, but we had a visit from Rob DeMarco and, yeah. and that was good. It was great to see Rob. We'll see him. You may see him before, but I'll, I'll see him up at Maker Camp. Yeah, um, Rob and his, I forget his wife's name. It's the second time I met her. I thought her. it was Laura. Well, Laura, that Maybe. sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I have that like in one ear, out the other thing with names. Supposed to repeat it back to them. I know, I do the same thing. You're supposed to be like, oh, hi, Laura. How you? Yeah, how, yeah. You know, great to meet you and all that stuff. But I never do it. And then the entire time I'm talking to somebody, I'm thinking, what is this person's name? Mm-hmm. And then the worst thing is when somebody you know comes up to you and then you feel like you have to introduce the person that you know to the person that you now forgot their name. And it's just like, Oh my God, I'm <laughs> bad at that. Is like, Hey, int- uh, introduce yourself yeah. to one another. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So I think we've had that saw. We had it right when we got the van. So that's gotta be, might even be three years now. I remember when you bought it. It's a pretty pricey saw. I think it's about seventeen hundred. Yeah, I looked it up right before we started, just so I could get that the full name of it. And I saw it for seventeen hundred, fifteen ninety nine. Looked like maybe the cheapest. It's a good saw. I have one. Mm-hmm. I've used it a few times. I thought I would use it more. Uh, <laughs> on my list of to do jobs that never seem to be getting done, along with the sauna, is uh, my garage is right off of my kitchen. And last year I, I padded out the walls because it's, I've got two by four walls that go into a two by six shoe okay. and, a, and a two by six header. Cause it's sitting on block or. Yeah. And, uh, I padded them out to the two by six and then I hired an electrician to set it all up so I could have a, a small shop in there with lighting and then I'm going to sheet rock it. So I did the padding out and I did the electrical work, but I've never done any of the insulation and sheetrock. So, and I said to my wife, I said, that's a job now that I'm saving for the end of September because mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be dealing with insulation now. Oh God, no. But the, the idea is when that garage gets finished, then I'll put the job site saw in there along with a cordless mm-hmm. Makita, uh, not Makita, uh, Milwaukee chop saw. Yep. Because the barn, my barn's about, almost 200 feet from the house, Mm -hmm. pretty far. And inevitably, whenever I do the smallest project on the house, I walk back and forth to the barn a minimum of 10 times. It's just amazing how many tools you need to do the slightest little project. Oh, yeah. And so uh, 
I have finally convinced my wife that the house will look a lot better and these renovations and things that she wants to get done will get done quicker if she doesn't listen to the podcast. So I can say if she'll get all of her <laughs> shit out of the garage and uh, it's just too much stuff. Oh yeah. And um, if she'll, I shouldn't say that she'll get all her stuff out of the garage and let me have just a small area then I'll keep it clean. And uh, it's, it's just funny. My wife is not the best at uh, keeping like tools and things like that organized, mm-hmm. but she loves the garden, but I've taken all the gardening tools and I've kind of organized them out by the barn and occasionally they'll go missing. And I just found one the other day in the, uh, in the compost pile. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah. My wife's the same way. I like, so <clears throat> I'm actually going to pick up, uh, a little bit later today, a kitchen that we had cut and then my kitchen that I had cut from the CNC guy. And I was down in my basement and a lot of the stuff from the kitchen is now in the basement, you know, because of the reno. And I'm like looking at all of that and all the stuff in that's in my kitchen now. I'm like, where is all this going to go? You know, like my kitchen is not that big. Um, I have every, my wife buys every single kitchen gadget <laughs> imaginable cherry pitter strawberry oh cutter God. ice cream maker we got the kitchen aid a blender pasta maker yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think i got two of those i'm sure instant pot uh we don't have a crock pot but the instant pot is basically that air fryer waffle maker and some other waffle maker that's like dinosaur shaped waffles you know everything i've heard good things about the air fryer yeah i don't know you don't need one I mean, I don't really, I guess, you know, because I, I'm keto or whatever, I don't really eat stuff that can go in there that okay. much, but um, it's kind of a pain to clean. You oh, know? really? It's like you have to clean out this like basket instead of just cleaning out like a frying pan. Yeah. I like it. A, a, I just like good stuff. Mm-hmm. Fewer things, but better things. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my wife's getting better and better at, at getting rid of stuff and at um, realizing that, you know, you just don't need that many things because we have so many things for holidays, mm-hmm. like like different trays for this and different. And I'm like, like she got rid of a lot of Halloween stuff. Uh, part of that is sentimental value. Like, yeah. You know, her thinking of the boys or Olivia who've outgrown, you know, the little scarecrow thing or whatever it was. Like we had one of those little skeletons that, you know, are on the front porch, tiny. Literally, this thing is only three feet tall, but I hated it because... I'm, I'm the maintenance man on the, on the property. And when I would blow out the driveway, I'd end up blowing this, you know, skeleton over. Yeah. Li- little, uh, jack-o'-lanterns, whatever's out there. You know, now I'm blowing. Oh, these that's things. like my wife puts like the skeleton in the grass and the tombstones. <laughs> and yet yeah, if, you know, you still have to cut the grass yeah. in October <laughs> and now I'm moving all these stupid things. Yeah. So less, I, and I say this to my sons who are all in their twenties now. I say less is more. The, the less stuff you have, the more time you'll have. My son Jack bought a boat last year, and uh, we we fixed it up a bit. He bought a new motor for it, and uh, I was talking to him the other night, and he's like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to sell it," <laughs> because it's just he's he said it's just one more thing to think about. You know, is is the sub uh, whatever the uh, the automatic pump if it bilge rains, pump. yeah, the bilge pump is that going to not work, and is mm-hmm. the boat going to sink and you know, it's, it's not the kind of boat that would stay afloat. Yeah. It's not like a Boston whaler. Right. So, uh, and yeah. you know, it's not in a slip. So it's like, if you want to take it out, you have to trailer it. His to is. The, oh, so he has it in the water. His, his, uh, girlfriend uh, is right on the Navasink river. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense, but he doesn't live on the Navasink river. So he still doesn't get over there. As pro- it's not like having a boat in your backyard. Like I've said to my wife, I think, I think my dream location to live would be upstate New York or Vermont or Pennsylvania, somewhere on a lake Mm -hmm. with a small boat, access to mountain biking and, and fishing, uh, fishing in the lake and rivers and potentially golf. I don't know about golf because the only way I'm going to go out on a boat is if it's in my backyard. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about the ocean. I like the ocean, you know, you know, you get do, out on a lake like and it's like everybody in, is, you know. Do you like being out in the ocean on a boat? Yeah. See, I don't. No. I, I'll i go out and I've, I've, I've gone out once or twice this year. I don't like to be too far off. Yeah. Did you guys go around the hook and actually out into the ocean? No. So that's the thing. The like, 
we ended up just in the bay off of uh off of Coney Island. I yeah, guess. yeah. And um and even that was like wow. You get I'm, some big rollers coming in there. You do get some big rollers and I've I've been seasick once or twice and it's just not fun. Yeah, I went offshore once. So we went to Carteret Canyon, which is like we went about a hundred miles offshore, like and then we went all the way south, like about parallel with like Baltimore, but like, you know, way offshore. Yeah. And uh, we, so we ran out out of Point Pleasant and you're sitting in these bean bags, you know, they have these like marine bean bags, which is like what you sit in. If really? You, yeah. Like, you know, a fishing boat only has like, let's say two seats, you know, okay. captain seat and one next to it. Yeah. Um, so you have these bean bags if you have more people and you just sit in them. And you get out there and the, the ride was fine, but then you stop. And that's when I started to feel sick. Um, Did you take anything like Dramamine or anything? I, I don't think I took any Dramamine, but, you know, so we left Point Pleasant at like nine o'clock at night. So we got out there at like, you know, two o'clock in the morning or something through one o'clock in the morning. So I just ended up falling asleep. And then I woke up and I, I, I guess, I don't know, just like the rocking in my sleep gave me some sea legs and I felt fine. Did you catch any? Uh, so we went out for tuna and so we're trolling around. We ended up catching some uh, skipjack, which are just like the little BS tuna. And then we went, we fished for tile fish in okay. like 600 feet of water. And I got a tile fish that was big. Good eating? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you a picture. The tile fish is a cool looking fish too. Um, it's like, almost looks like a tropical fish, but it's, you know, I mean, once you get out there, the water is like, is blue, you know? Um, it's all like yellow and it was a golden tile fish. I don't know if I ever showed you this, but this is a big fluke I caught. That's a huge fluke. 32 inches. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that is a big fluke. That was 2016 right off, right in front of Earl in the bay. Um, off the boat. Yeah. So if, if you don't know what Earl is, that's the Navy base by us here in New Jersey. And you can't get too close to that when you're fishing. It's patrolled. Yeah. So, so actually what happened is it was like a Saturday. There was a tournament going on. Uh, we weren't in the tournament, but. Oh, wow. That so, is a cool looking fish. Yeah. So we actually, we went out. I'm with my buddy and his girlfriend on his boat and his girlfriend caught a seven pounder. Wow. Big fluke. Yeah. You know, 20 something inches. Um, and then my buddy Anthony called and he's like, Hey, we're, he was on his uncle's boat. We're in front of Earl. They're catching him over here. So we shot over there and, you know, we set up on a couple drifts and then the Navy boat comes out. It's yeah. one of those Kodiaks, 50 caliber machine gun. And they get on the loudspeaker. They're like, everybody has to move a hundred yards towards New York because people started to drift into the restricted area. Um, so we move out, we set up on a drift and I'm fishing with a big six ounce cannonball with like a big grub on it, curly tail grub. And I thought I was snagged. It turned out it was this monster fluke. And I, you know, they like suck down to the bottom when you yeah. catch them yeah. and had to pull it up. And people were going crazy because it was a tournament and we weren't in the tournament. Oh my so there's God. people that they're like, let me buy that fish oh, off wow. you. Cause the purse for the tournament was like, I forget five or $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was huge. Yeah, that's a huge fluke. I've never seen a fluke that big. It was like 13 pounds. Jeez. So you ate that. How'd yep. you cook it? Did so actually that whole, I got married. That was uh, uh, June or July, 2016. I got married in October. So all the fish, all the fluke that we caught that summer, I froze and we gave to the chef who did my wedding. And that was one of the dishes. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's like a real nice touch. Mm -hmm. Did you have a big wedding? Uh, I forget how many people we had. Less than 100. Yeah, that's probably about what I was. Mine was a long time ago, so. Yeah, we did it right um, at my sister-in-law's house, sister and brother-in-law's house in Leonardo. There were like three houses off the water, right by the lighthouse. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. Leonardo's a great town. Yeah. We went to the marina on Saturday, um, uh, Sunday. We're sitting there Saturday. My wife's at work. I'm like, hey, we should go fishing tomorrow. So I text her. I said, you want to go fishing tomorrow? Yeah. So we went over to the marina and there's a little bulkhead. And I got, got her set up. I got my son set up. And then I got myself set up. I throw out first cast. Bang. Hit a short fluke. This Saturday? Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Sunday. This Sunday? Sunday? Nice. Yeah. Because uh, it rained Saturday. Wait. Off 
off the dock or out in a boat? Uh, there's like a little, you go down to the beach and then there's a bulkhead yeah, okay, where okay, the, yeah. the channel comes in. First cast got, got a short fluke and then that was it. Nothing else. That's a great place to keep a boat if you, oh yeah, if you have a boat. I don't know. Are there sl slips even available there? Uh, yeah, I saw something recently about there being one available. So what do they go for? I don't know. It's usually, I think a couple hundred bucks a foot. Okay. For the season. It's a nice area to have, to keep your boat because it's yeah, not I mean, very that's busy. Right across the street from my house, basically. Yeah. yeah. That whole area back there is really nice. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I thought like years ago, it would have been great to buy a house back there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I really couldn't afford to do it, but I just like the neighborhood. And I think that's the same school district that my kids go to. Yeah, it's all Middletown. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we're getting pretty deep in the weeds on fishing yeah. stuff. <laughs> let's talk about your uh let's talk about your kitchen or the kitchen that you're starting on. Yeah, so uh working on a kitchen up in Ramsey, which is Bergen County, um, like ninety minutes north, like almost to New York State. Um, so that's with Donnie Douglas Design. If you've listened to the podcast for any amount of time, uh, you know the name. Jacqueline was on the podcast maybe uh, about a year ago. Um, so we haven't worked with them a lot recently. I think uh, for a lot of designers, residential has kind of slowed down. And apparently, like, general contractors are very slow. From really? what I've heard. Yeah. I mean, we're pretty busy. Um, not, not, I would say not as many leads coming in right now at the, compared to, like, the busiest time. But it's, it's definitely not slow. Um, so that is going to be Egger five-piece doors. So I'm buying those through Richelieu. They have a manufacturer who make shaker style doors, but it's all out of the Egger TFL panel, the melamine. So that should be nice. Um, the island will be painted. I'm going to be painting that. And then I have some cabinets that have glass doors, black aluminum from Hayfla. Uh, they, they make custom aluminum doors. So you just, nice. you know, give them the specs. They make them glass, glass panel. Uh, so those cabinets are made out of the Egger. And then... We have a storage wall that has two pantry height cabinets on the outside. And then there's base cabinets with a countertop sitting on top of that countertop is three cabinets that we have an open, open cabinet in the center and then pocket doors on the sides. So that'll be out of melamine as well. Is this new construction or is this a renovation? Renovation. Yeah. So they gutted it like maybe three weeks ago. Did you, did you actually set foot into the job site before they gutted it or yep. during the gut? So you, you uh, Before and after, yeah. Okay. They dragged me out there afterwards, even though I didn't want to go. So it's probably good, though, to kind of get a good idea of what's happening. Yeah. I didn't really uh, glean anything from the trip, but, you know, I made them pay for it. Oh, that's good. They're like, we've never had somebody refuse a site visit. I'm like, they wanted me to meet with the GC to go over the things that I needed. I'm like, it's in an email. I'm like we could like FaceTime or something. I'm like well, I'm going to drive 90 minutes. It was a 15 minute meeting. Yeah. I charge them for, uh, six and a half man hours. Nice. 90 minutes to drive up two guys, 90 minutes to drive there, 15 minute meeting, 90 minutes to drive back. Yeah. That's the way you have to treat everything. Otherwise people just take advantage of you. Like your time doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, um, like I didn't build in that to the job, you know? Yeah. No, it totally makes sense. And, I think you I think it, the client will takes you more serious if you take yourself more serious. Yeah. So you got that job going. When will you actually start your kitchen? Uh, so I actually ordered the edge banding today. Where is I wanted to actually show you the colors I landed on. They're uh, two historical colors from Benjamin Moore. But you're oh, but you're right using here. Enduro paint. Yes. <clears throat> So the charcoal slate will be the base cabinets oh, and the nice. uh, Kenny Bunkport green will be the uppers. I like that. Now, the, what's the finish? I know it's paint, but like what's the matte uh, gloss? Uh, yeah, I'll probably go with matte. All right. And how durable is the matte? Uh, I I don't think they like it doesn't matter make any distinction. No. Um, let me see. And then this is, so that's the color of the flooring. Oh, nice. And then the walls. So that's called Summer Peach. Um, that's what we have in our living room. I think we might do that in the kitchen as well. All right. And that's actually that color there. So it just kind of has like a touch of 
peach in it. How are you finishing the top of the cabinet? It's like a small crown or something? Yeah, I have to. And then um, like, so if you're looking at the sink, there's two windows and then I have upper and then the fridge cabinet and I have a drain pipe that's actually like, I have to build a soffit. Yep. But rather than do it out of sheetrock, I think I'll just continue something around off of that upper cabinet, you know? Sure. So I'll have to figure out. And what are your countertops? Uh, we haven't gotten that far. I actually, I reached out to Lindsay, one of the designers we work with, and sent her that picture. I'm like, what do you think for, in my drawing, I have like a, like almost like a black countertop. Hmm. Like soapstone. Well, that Soapstone's make, not a great. Will black make the uh, space look smaller? Uh, I don't think so because like the cabinets are, you know, I only have two upper cabinets. It's like there's half of the room is open because it's uh like the dining area, you know? Okay. I don't know. I just, uh, I always think white. Well, not white, but I do. I do like that sort of white quartz island look that you see a lot these days. Yeah. Um, I just think with those colors, like it has to be something that's relatively dark. Because you put white now between yeah, those two colors, right. it looks weird. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's see if I can. Be interesting to see what your designer comes back with because uh that's definitely a talent oh yeah and that's something that like you know she has to do all the time like i don't ever have to pick out oh this is the one that's missing the uh so this is your kitchen we're looking at right now yeah let me just switch over to this oh wait this one and this is uh Mosaic is your design software? Yeah. Pretty simple to use? Yeah. It's it's uh, mostly drag and drop. Really? Can you give me the dimensions of the length and width of the room? Yeah. It is um, 253 okay. by 137 and an eighth. All right. So 20... 21 feet by... Uh, so there's your triangle, right? There's your... Um, yes. Your, sink, yeah. stove, fridge. This is like a little peninsula. I added a couple shallow cabinets here. So this is not a sitting island. Okay. Or peninsula. And then I'm going to do a banquette here. Nice. With a table. Are you going to make your table? That's the, the idea. We should make that table. We can make it on today's cross. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's... I mean, I think... I think a table like that, you, you make something that's pretty solid, mm -hmm. um, uh, elegant, yeah. but something that's going to take a beating. Oh, yeah. And um, Yeah, like a, you have to have a solid wood top on it if that's you're going to have a table with kids and, you know. So our kitchen table, originally, the base is ash, and it's made with, uh, basically, it's two parts that interlock together with a lap joint, and then there's a round top. And originally... I had, I, I think, uh, might have been an ash top as well, but it was small. It was maybe 42 inches. Mm -hmm. And that was great when the kids were little. And then a couple of years ago, or maybe 10 years ago at this point, or maybe even longer, I made a, a new top for it out of cherry because the top now is 52 inches. Mm -hmm. So you barely even see the base, but it's five quarter. And then I, I used the power plane to plane it down so the edge is only an eighth of an inch, not an eighth of an inch, a half of an inch thick. Yeah, like that's what I want to do. Have a real big undercut on it so that it looks a, light. Yes, you know? that makes a huge difference. It's like that lily table that I made mm -hmm. out of white oak. If that had a bullnose on the end of it, like five-quarter bullnose, that would look like a Flintstone piece yeah, of furniture. Yeah. But because you taper the edge, all of a sudden it looks nice and elegant. Mm -hmm. So I did that and I, I finished it with Minwax's oil-based polyurethane. I think I did five coats. And that just holds up to everything. Oh, yeah. It's I mean, bull uh, poly is a bulletproof finish, I mean. And, you know, if you put it on right, it, you can get a nice finish. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking a kitchen table that's constantly getting wiped off, constantly getting plates thrown on it. Oh, yeah. It kind of gets its own patina after yeah, a while. Yeah. And there's places there where I can see where the kids play tic-tac-toe, you know, with a ballpoint pen on a mm -hmm. piece of paper. And now all those things are kind of like nice character. And then, yeah, George Nakashima called it Kevinizing. That was his son. Oh, that's like, neat. Yeah. yeah. Things become Kevinized. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. He liked it when things would... Uh, yeah, people would bring him stuff and be like, can you like refinish it? And he's like, no. He's like, "This is that's what happens to furniture. Like, that's part of it. How did he feel about just like lightly sanding and then just going over it again with another coat of oil? Yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, yeah, like refreshing it a little bit. I've done that with water locks and it, it kind of brings everything back to life, mm -hmm. but you still retain that character. Yeah. So my coffee table is made out of, it's eight quarter cherry, big undercut like that. Yeah. It, originally it was in the podcast studio in my basement. We had that and two side tables. It's all now in my living room. Um, and that's like where my son sits every day. He eats breakfast there. He watches TV, plays with clay, draws, and it's, you know, same thing. It's got like its own patina on it now. And only once have I like scuffed it and hit it with, it's just tongue oil. Nice. Real milk paint, pure tongue oil and citrus solvent. And it's held up like amazing. And that's, that's been in there for a couple of years. Yeah. There's something to be said about solid wood. It, it can take a beating. And if it does, if something does happen to it, it's not like the end of the world. And like, as opposed to veneer, veneer is like, you kind of got to take care of it. Yeah. It's not really like repairable. Um, and cherry, there's something about cherry that it gets such a character to it. Like, I think if it was made out of white oak, it wouldn't look the same. You know, it, it, it doesn't take that abuse in like a good way. I'll agree with that. I have, because the deeper grain in the white oak can collect almost like dirt. Yeah. It kind of gets dirty. So I have a few pieces that are maybe 25 years old or more that I, I really like the design and the look of it. But I need to actually remove the old finish. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like I can't, if I scuff it up, it's just going to be like locking in dirt because of that deep grain that yeah. you have with white oak. So with veneer, if you, if you watch my channel, you know that I do make a lot of veneer projects. I like veneer because I love mid-century modern furniture. Yeah. And I think veneer gets a bad rap. A lot of really good mid-century modern furniture is veneer. Most of it is. Basically all of it, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I... I do work with GL veneer, like one project a quarter. So right now I'm doing like a really beginner, uh, beginner style bookshelf. Cameron, and, by the way, is infatuated with the monkey pod. Oh, really? He likes yeah, that he's stuff? like, I want to make something like that. I'm like, you're a little ways away. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I've got some scraps. <laughs> I've got some scraps if he wants to play around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the monkey pod is is nice. I like it. Um, I had some extra from the end tables that I made last time and uh so now i'm making i'm using that monkey pod for this little bookcase too and in fact this is almost a complete replica of a piece that i made on the channel almost 10 years ago because uh the piece that i made 10 years ago the video got demonetized because of music license oh really? so i used to use something called um is it the cherry one with the, yes. Yeah. That's with the one the that we inside. were watching the other yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I used uh, something called epidemic sound. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just, I didn't like their, I didn't like their selection or I found it difficult to use. Like I'm just looking for something that is kind of relaxed. I just could never find it. And I would, I would end up using things a few times and be like, I don't like that. And I actually kind of think it wrecks the video. But anyway, the downside of it is if you let that subscription subscription lapse, then they can demonetize your video. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just kind of like a hassle. So now, like, you and I don't use any music, and I don't use any music in my videos anymore. So at the end of this video, I'll, I'll tell everybody that this is a rebuild, if you didn't already guess it by now. And I may even throw some footage of the old project up because I look 10 years younger, which is... Uh, um, you know, just happens. You could, pro couldn't you just like re-upload it with no music? Yeah, but then I have to re-edit the whole thing yeah. anyway. And I wanted to fulfill an agreement with with GL Veneer, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm making this piece of furniture for my son Jack. Who Jack is out of the house, so that gives me an opportunity to make furniture if I don't have a client. And at this point, I actually prefer making furniture or a family member over a client anyway, as long as the project is sponsored, because mm -hmm. then you don't 
like I'm giving it to Jack. So if he has any complaints, suck it up. Too bad. (laughs) He doesn't. I'll just like shoot him a picture. Hey Jack, you want me, you want something this for your house? And, uh, he'll, you know, say yes or no, or could you do it a little different for this area? Yeah. And people get super like hyper fixated on things when they're paying for it. You know, they do. It's understandable. I agree. Yeah. Like you quote, a piece out to a client and it's 15 grand. Yeah. I'm going to paint over every detail too. You know, you present me with two options. Like, Holy shit. Which one do I pick? Yeah. It's nice not having to uh, work for a client, especially mm-hmm. on furniture builds where it becomes, things become so specific where, I mean, with a big cabinet, kitchen cabinets, there's always going to be like, it's just too big of a picture to like nitpick, nitpick every little, little uh, angle of mm-hmm. it. So anyway, that's, um, those are my thoughts on veneer. I do like veneer, but I, in the long term, for something that's going to get beat on, like a kitchen table, even a dining table, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put veneer on a dining room table. No, I mean, plenty of people do, and and I guess under normal circumstances, it's it's typically not a problem, but it could be a problem. Yeah, um, talking about a dining room table, I'm, that's going to be another upcoming project for my own home, mm-hmm. and I. I asked my wife, I was like, I'd really like to make this out of cherry. And she's pretty much put her foot down and wants it made out of walnut. Which I like, but walnut is soft. Yeah. And it also, it's it's going to get a decent amount of sun exposure. And walnut just lightens up. Oh, big time, yeah. So I think that's just uh, something you have to deal with. Yeah. We're just going to have to suck that up and know it. I mean, maybe I'll stain it. Yeah. Could stain wall. I've stained walnut before. People, paint it. Yeah, paint it. I'll paint it. And uh, we did a um, <clears throat> walnut stained black. Just yeah, I remember that. Just for the grain pattern. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. people want stuff, and you just don't ask questions. But I can see that though, because walnut stained black is going to look a hell of a lot different than cherry stained black. Oh yeah, and a hell of a lot different than something like white oak. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else you could stain walnut black that butternut. Ash is like, that's like one of the go-tos for going real, bl- like black, black is like okay. white ash. Isn't ash going to be difficult to get now? Yeah, with the emerald ash borer. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a, a thought on the podcast of, uh, how did we, how did you say that? Um, listener's choice or something like that? Oh, like comment of the week. Oh, are you talking about the tips? We could do that. We could, what do you think? Tips or comment of the week? Well, I think, I think we should do a comment of the week on the podcast. And then I think we should have the viewers and the listeners write in uh, tips that we can, well, we can make videos. These are user, user, not user, listener, v- viewer, listener submitted tips, and then we'll test them out. So how many is, uh, you think three to five for each video? Yeah. Yeah. So how do, do people leave those tips on your podcast? On the podcast? I'd say either as a comment on the you, the week's YouTube video, or they could DM us on Instagram. They could DM you. They could DM me. They could DM Today's I Craftsman. I say we keep it all Today's Craftsman. Yeah, ideally. Yeah, just because it'll be easier to find. Right. So either, either Today's Craftsman YouTube or Today's Craftsman Instagram. Yeah. And then we'll compile them however we see fit. Like we were talking about doing a tip, a tip video on like the table saw or a tip video on the band saw or organization or... Sounds good to me. Yeah. And then we could, you know, we could let you know if we like your tip or not. <laughs> <laughs> so at the very least, you, you'll get a shout out. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then comment of the week. I think it'd just be something funny to talk about. You know, we get some wacky comments. That Remember I sent you that comment and I was like, what is this about? Yeah. I commented back and the guy was like, holy crap. He's like, I thought I was commenting on a different video. <laughs> I was like, oh man. I was like, I was just thinking to myself like, yeah, I don't know. I know because you sent me a screenshot and I was just like, yeah, I know. I looked at that and I, I couldn't figure it out. Whatever. I mean, I've gotten some crazy comments before we talked about the one, uh, on the after show of the podcast years ago where the guy was talking about how Taylor Swift was in the Illuminati and was killing people, (laughs) killing homeless people. Yeah. I remember that conversation. I think I might've been on recently after that. We were talking about that. Oh man. Well, we're, uh, we're, we're trying to keep the show a little bit shorter. Give you guys just a, a easily digestible episode every week. Nothing crazy. So we're going to wrap up. Yeah. And I think when we have more to say 
on other things. Plus, you're kind of on a timeline today. You got to get out yeah, of here. Yeah, we got to shoot kitchen. out to Washington Township and back, which is uh, about an hour, maybe 90 minutes. So, yeah. Well, I enjoyed being here. It was good. We just, I enjoyed shooting that video. And uh, I guess we will shoot a video eventually on the, on the uh, spray booth. Cause yeah. I, I wanted to know more about that, but we kind of ran out of time today. I don't have any plans on using it uh, anytime within the next, like at least week. Cool. So we got time. All right. Next week, this time. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you're not already subscribe to the today's craftsman YouTube channel, every Saturday at eight thirty AM, we release a video and occasionally uh, we have some bonus videos and yeah, tell a friend. All right. See you guys next week. Thanks. If you enjoyed this episode, please tell a friend or share it on social media. You can leave a review of this podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And don't forget, today's Craftsman YouTube channel has an upload every Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. We'll see you next week.